Today's video, I'm gonna take you back to the 1950s just for a second. All three of the big US auto manufacturers started building bigger cars because they were more profitable. It made more sense. They could make more money on less units. Coming out of the 50s, they started to rethink that. And they were looking at the European imports, the Beetle, the Fiat 500. These were small economical cars that were coming into the US market and taking sales away. So Ford, and actually Robert McNamara, who was a person that looked at trends and looked at spreadsheets and numbers, felt there was a need for a six-passenger, economical, easy-to-buy, utilitarian car. And that car was the Ford Falcon. McNamara was involved in the development of this car the entire way, and he insisted on keeping costs down and keeping the car relatively simple. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Ford Falcon from 1960 through 1970. The 1960 Falcon was powered by a small, lightweight, 95 horsepower, 144 cubic inch straight six with a single barrel carburetor. A three-speed manual column shift was standard and the two-speed ford o -matic automatic was optional. Ford used unibody construction as opposed to full frame. This method of construction had been previously introduced on the 1958 Ford Thunderbird and Lincoln Continental. It featured coilover front suspension, a leaf spring rear suspension, and drum brakes front and rear. The Falcon had room for six passengers. Body styles included two and four-door sedans, two and four-door station wagons, and the Ranchero car-based pickup. First year sales topped 435,676, and the Falcon easily became the most popular Ford passenger vehicle. Robert McNamara became Ford's president briefly, but was offered the job of the U.S. Defense Secretary and left Ford shortly after the Falcon's introduction. His dedication to the Falcon was vindicated with these record sales numbers. Now, there's a great new Falcon with a great new look. The exciting new Falcon Sports Futura. Falcon's new look starts here with a sleek new Thunderbird-styled roof available with a distinctive vinyl covering. The new Sports Futura's beauty continues inside where you are cradled in comfort by a pair of deep foam bucket seats. And between the seats, you'll find a handy personal console right at your fingertips. This is the new Falcon Sports Futura, bringing you new beauty, new luxury, and the added performance of an optional 170 special engine. Yet for all its features, the Sports Futura is still priced below some standard compacts. It's just one of 14 lively Falcons that offer you proven top gas mileage and the lowest price of any six-passenger car in America. See them all at your Ford dealers, home of the lively ones. The 1961 model year Falcon introduced an optional 101 horsepower, 170 cubic inch straight six, and two new models were added. The Futura, which featured bucket seats and a console and a slightly higher trim level, and a delivery. There were no other changes of note as this was mostly a carryover year for the Falcon and Ford's marketing fuel economy was front and center. Ford claimed the Falcon could achieve 30 miles per gallon. Falcon sales numbers were again impressive with 474,241 cars being delivered. The 1962 model year saw the introduction of the Squire model, four-door station wagon. It featured faux wood trim on the sides. The bucket seat Futura model was offered with a slightly upgraded interior, factory installed safety belts, and featured different side trim and emblems. Halfway through the model year, Ford changed the roof line at the back window and offered a four-speed transmission for the first time. Ford introduced the Ford Falcon Club Wagon and Deluxe Club Wagon. Ford also promoted that in a mobile gas economy run, the Falcon got 32.5 miles per gallon. Ford dealers delivered 396,129 Falcons in 1962. For the 1963 model, Ford added even more models to the lineup. Now a four-door Futura and a deluxe wagon were available. Futura convertible and Futura sports convertible models were also included. Later in the year, hardtops and the new Sprint model were introduced. Halfway through the model year, Ford dropped in the Fairlane 164 horsepower Challenger 260 cubic inch V8 into the Falcon. The V8 option was only available in the 63 and a half model, and these cars were produced in very limited numbers, with only 10,479 Sprint two-door hardtops and 4,602 Sprint convertibles. 
On a side note, the Falcon Sprint cars were the basis for the 1965 Mustangs, released by Ford one year later. Much of the interior, chassis, suspension, and drivetrain components from the 63.5 Ford Falcon Sprint are nearly mechanically identical to the 1965 Mustang. I have here about three hours and 60 minutes of carefully prepared notes on the changes in this lovely new Falcon for 1964. But, look at it. That car is so lovely that I shan't talk about that much. We'll just take some shots of it. Some beautiful shots of a really lovely automobile. Then I won't even have to mention the new styling change, or the new wide grill, or the new excitement in this car. Nor even that it's still the all-time economy champ, which it is. In fact, the less I say, and the more you just look at this lovely car, the less I'll need to point out that the inside of this new Falcon has been redone for more convenience and a roomier feeling. Or even mention Falcons twice a year or every 6,000 mile maintenance, or the many other economy features that I might. We won't need all these notes at all, as a matter of fact. Because you're gonna find out all these things and more when you drop in at your Ford dealers and for yourself see the 64 Falcon, one of the total performance cars from Ford. The 1964 model year sees Ford release a second generation Falcon. It was launched in 1963 and featured revised, more squared off styling. Front suspension was coil spring, pivot mounted on upper A-arms. Six-cylinder cars had four lug hubs and 13-inch steel wheels. V8 cars got five lug wheels. While visually different, the majority of the car remained the same. Ford added a sprint package, and these cars featured a 164 horsepower 260 V8, a stiffer suspension, and a louder exhaust. Mid-year, Ford added the 116 horsepower 200 cubic inch straight six and the 200 horsepower 289 V8 as options. 300,770 Falcons were sold in 1964. The 1965 model Falcon was mostly a carryover year and the changes were minimal. A new grille and revised side trim on the deluxe models were the only exterior changes of note. A padded instrument panel, power steering, power brakes, a radio, a remote control trunk release, and a parking brake warning light were optional. The three-speed Cruise-O-Matic transmission became available. Front seat belts were now standard. The Sprint was overshadowed by the Mustang, and it was discontinued after 1965. Also, production for the convertibles ended on June 26, 1965. 214,601 Falcons were sold in 1965. <laughs> Falcon, 1966. Falcon has a low, lean, long-hooded look. More muscle in the suspension. This has got to be the smoothest riding compact ever. Great gas savings even with a brawny 200 cubic inch six. Falcon, best buy yet for 66, with a sleek, tough new wagon. Falcon, America's all-time economy champ. You're ahead in a Ford all the way. In late 1965, Ford launched a third-generation Falcon as a 1966 model. It was based on a shortened Fairlane platform with revised styling. At the top of the line was the highly trimmed Futura Sports Coupe, which featured chrome side window frames. It also featured a premium all vinyl interior. The heater defroster became standard. Brakes were 9 inch for six cylinder Falcons and 10 inch for V8s. The two door hardtop and convertible were both dropped, and the station wagon and ranchero were moved to the larger platform Fairlane. 148,630 1966 Falcons were produced. 1967 was almost a complete carryover year. The engine lineup saw the addition of the 225 horsepower 289 four barrel V8. Other than that, only the federally mandated safety equipment was added. These updates included dual circuit brake system, an energy absorbing steering wheel with a large padded center hub, four way flashers, soft interior panels, and mountings for front shoulder belts. These were available as an option. Total production for the year was 64,344. I wouldn't include the 1968-1969 Falcons in the same segment as there was really no changes. 
They got new side marker lights or reflectors. The shoulder belts became standard and headrests were added to cars built after January 1st, 1969. The basic body and mechanical specifications remained the same as the 66 and 67 models. Mid-year 1968 saw the 230 horsepower 302 replace the 289 and the 302 two-barrel become the standard V8. Combined sales for both years were up slightly at 226,405. Sales declines and the inability of the car to meet the forthcoming safety standards resulted in a short run of 1970 model Falcons. These were identical to the years prior and they were built through the end of December 1969. None of the 70 model Falcons used a locking steering column that would be standard on all other 70 Ford products. Ford did renew the Falcon badge, introducing a 1970 and a half Falcon. It became the lowest priced Ford intermediate car and was based on the Torino platform. The 70 and a half Falcon was offered in three body styles, including a two door pillared sedan, a four door sedan, and a five door station wagon. As the lowest intermediate series, the Falcon was marketed with a limited number of options and conveniences. These included standard manual windows, optional power windows were limited to the station wagon, radios, all of these were optional, and air conditioning. The heater was standard by 1970. The model line was offered with the entire range of powertrains offered to Ford Intermediates, and these ranged from the 155 horsepower, 250 cubic inch inline six to the 370 horsepower, 429 Torino Cobra Jet Ram Air. 67,070 and a half Falcons were sold. And that was the end of the line for the Falcon. The Maverick took its place in Ford's economical lineup, and the Mustang supplanted the Sprint as the sporty coupe. My brother-in-law's owned a 65 Falcon Sprint for over 40 years. He's owned the car almost as long as I've known him. Yes, it's got a 64 grill in it because he just likes that better. That's it for today's video. If you like the Falcon, I'm going to point you over here. It's my brother-in-law's car. It's one of my first videos. So yeah, it's not the greatest editing because I didn't know anything about it when I started. But it's a neat looking car. It'll give you the story behind it, and it's a heartwarming story. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.